cool. Welcome to Frozen City Toastmasters. I'm your president, Baron Jacobson. Looks like we have kind of a small meeting today. Johnny, welcome as a guest. Thank you. And all of our other members. Uh, we'll start with our mission statement in the bottom left-hand corner of your agenda. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. It looks like we have one speech being given today and one evaluation. Excited for that. Um, any new business board? I don't think so. Just a reminder that elections are coming up. So if you do have an interest in being on the board, um, email us. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that's it. So I'll just pass it to the Toastmaster of the day, Denise. Thank you, Farron. This is where I'm going to have to really rely on what skills I've taken from Toastmasters because I am not prepared at all. It's just been one of those weeks that have just kind of stretched on <laughs> for months, it feels like. I'm just really busy at work. And then when I get home, I just shut my brain off. And so anyway. Having said that, it is global, the theme of the day is Global Parents Day, right? I think so. And I wasn't aware of this. I've heard of Parents Day. I know when my girls were younger, they would have a Parents Day at school. I never really associated it with this time of year because it was always like Mother's Day and Father's Day. So I'm not sure when that happened or which child it was because things changed per child per, per year. But I did Google really quick and they just talked about, uh, it's an international movement this particular day of Global Parents Day and how important it is for parents, regardless of where you are from, um, you know, or what your situation is, that children are able to grow up in homes that are loving and patient and kind. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with how much money or what things you can buy your child. It's time, it's presence, it's uh, making them feel confident and cared for. And I think that we can all relate to that as previous children and how we can remember those days where we just, there's certain memories in our childhood that we'll think of with our parents and it wasn't really something significant. Um, I'm going to share one of, <laughs> it's a funny story. It was Halloween. I didn't have a costume. I got invited to a popular girl's Halloween party and my mom said, don't worry, I have a costume for you got to the day of the party and my mother <laughs> wrapped me in tin foil and told me I was the tin man. Well, by the time <laughs> I got to the party, all of the tin foil had fallen off of me <laughs> and it was traumatizing for a second, but then it ended up being like one of the most memorable events just because of the tragedy and calamity of the whole thing. Um, and so I just, I don't know. I, it's just, there's just moments when parents with even the best intentions, um, they get the love across. I knew my mom loved me and she tried and it, and it was okay. And now that memory makes me laugh. Anyway, that went over a little more than I needed to, to talk, but um, I will go ahead and introduce our general evaluator for today. And that is Denny Mason. You're muted, Denny. Hi, everybody. Thank you for that. We have an evaluation team today, which is part of our Toastmasters experience. And I'm going to introduce each of these. And if you'll take a moment to just explain to everyone else what you're going to do for us today. So our grammarian today is going to be Sarah. Hello. Thank you, Denny. Grammarian of the day. They choose a word and everybody else gets the opportunity to use that word in a sentence. 
uh, during their speech, so being able to do it so it expands our vocabulary and we have more options to choose from in the future. The word I chose was tenable. I just put it in your chat. You should see it there. And it means based on sound reasoning or evidence. And I am sure that the reason that we have a grammarian is because Toastmasters thought it was tenable. So it's based on sound reasoning or good luck using that. And I'll throw it back to you, Denny. <laughs> Very good, Sarah. That's a great word. Thank you. And our awe counter today is Joey. Thank you, Miss Denny. And I think one of the, of all the roles, the most tenable one to get rid of a lot of the filler words is the ah counter. So I will be monitoring the ahs and ums, the likes, the tisks, and all the other filler words that we use when we aren't comfortable with a pause, which should be probably the right or correct thing to do. And that's what I'll be doing today along with the evaluation portion. Thanks, Joey. Our timer today is Farron. Thank you, Denny. And Toastmasters, it is tenable to stick to a specific allotted time so that we don't run over our meeting. I will be timing Heather's speech, which is five to seven minutes. At five minutes, I'll give her a green background. At six minutes, yellow, and at seven minutes, red. Evaluation will be two, two and a half, and three. And our table topics will be one minute, one and a half minutes and two minutes. And then I'll give a report at the end of the meeting. Very good, I love the special effects, that's great. Thanks, Farron. And I'll give a report at the end after everybody else gives a report at the end. So I'm gonna turn this back over to our Toastmaster, Denise. Um, there she is. Got it. Thank you, Denny. We have one speaker today. Ms. Heather Davis. I believe this is Heather's fourth speech. I am honored to be able to introduce her today and ill prepared again as I look for her introductory. She will be <clears throat> giving a speech on, I'm sorry, Heather. <clears throat> Excuse me the golden rules of camping. To prepare her speech, Heather did the unthinkable. She willingly slept outside in nature and hunted her own food to survive this extra long weekend. Okay, maybe she wasn't the typical hunter or gatherer like her ancestors once were, but she did learn a lot about the do's and don'ts when it comes to camping. So here are Heather's golden rules. Thank you, Denise, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming here for my fourth speech. I do have some notes. I will try my hardest not to look at them. But as Denise said, I will be talking about the golden rules of camping today. Uh, this weekend, I went camping for the second time in my life, and it was quite an experience. Uh, I'd first like to ask, how many of you have actually been camping before? OK, so almost all of you. OK, so you know what to expect. Now I've learned real quick that there's a difference between camping like with facilities and then camping without it. And I learned real quick what a potty pop-up tent is. But before I get any further, I wanted to talk to you about the golden rules. And from what I've found in research, according to Camping Maniacs, there are seven golden rules. And I will tell you what those rules are and then I will follow up with um, some more in-depth insight of what those rules and some of my own experience and how I can apply those rules. So to give you an overview, these seven rules are as follow. Number one is setting camp. Two is noise control. Three is fire safety. Four is good neighborliness, so being good neighbors. Number five is nature conservation. Six is cleanliness. And number seven is leaving no trace. So we'll go on to number one, which is setting camp. And I learned real quick that setting your camp is, and picking your spot is very important because where you camp is going to 
well, you'll be there for the full weekend. And it's really going to uh, set the mood and the tone. Thankfully, I went camping with people that have gone to this campsite for 20 plus years. So they knew where they were going. They've gone to the same one. They are very particular with where they like to camp. Luckily for me, they chose a very beautiful camping spot. We had a creek running behind us. We had space for fire, for our tents. We had some pretty awesome neighbors that even would uh, break down some wood for us. <laughs> we didn't have to go on late night uh, stick runs. Uh, so that was really important. We were also very lucky that the grandparents, I was with the family and the grandparents went ahead earlier on Wednesday. So we didn't have to fight for uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, and also just so you know, we uh, camped in Oakhurst, Soquel Meadows, or excuse me, Soquel Meadows. So if, if you are ever interested, it's about an hour and a half away and it was free. So with more to that, you also don't want to uh, step on other people's, uh, not property, but their area. You don't want anybody walking in your backyard, right? So that's essentially what you also want to maintain outside. You know, everybody, the nature is for everybody, but everybody's got it, everybody has their own space. So you want to respect that. You also want to adhere to speed limits because people are going to be out and about on their uh, rhinos, their quads. So you really got to pay attention to that, and especially when there are little kids and dogs around. Number two is noise control. So <laughs> you don't really realize how loud sound can carry until it's like two in the morning and you hear people drinking and partying. Thankfully, that only happened one night, and for the most part, we had some pretty good neighbors, uh, but you realize quickly that sound does carry and that your tent is very thin and does not stop noise from coming through. Uh, so you just want to be mindful of that. Uh, you know, if you pass midnight into the new day and you're still really loud, okay, maybe people might say anything, but thankfully I'm deaf and I, I can fall asleep through anything. <laughs> but yes, you want to be mindful of your neighbors. And then you also want to be mindful of the early morning as well. I kind of laughed at one of the mornings where I got up super early because your clock is all thrown off. And at like six in the morning, I woke up and I hear this dad kind of moving around our neighbor and little kids starting to want to make noise. And I just hear this dad go, shh, quiet morning hour, no talking. And I just wish that we could apply that in our daily life. but. There's something about being outdoors and being in nature that people are just more easy. You know, they are relaxed, they're easier to listen. There's just not that stress of daily life. So moving on from that, we also have fire safety, which is huge, especially here in California when things get so dry. Uh, you also wanna make sure prior to going to your camping trip that it's even a burn Time. Sometimes you're not allowed to burn, so you really want to look into that before. Um, also, don't bring your own wood. Uh, you have that um, the possibility of contamination or bringing outside of things into a forest that already has their own fauna and flora, their own thing going on. So you don't want to mix nature if you don't, if you can help it. Also, never walk away or leave your fire unintended. Anytime no one's at the campsite, you really wanna make sure that fire isn't burning. It's for you and the safety of others because you have no control of fire and the moment you turn your back, that's when things get crazy. And also fire, the most important or most fun thing I think was s'mores. You can't have a camping trip without s'mores and fire. And there's also something I've noticed about late nights around the campfire, maybe a couple drinks, people get real honest. And I just, I really enjoy that part because you just get to unplug and just enjoy and listen. And we're just so caught up in our daily life that we forget to listen, we forget to breathe. The next section, number, excuse me, I lost track. Number four is being good neighbors. Like I said, you don't want to be too loud, too late. You want to treat others as they would treat you. Like I said, don't trespass on other people's property. Just be respectful. That's ultimately what it comes down to. Um, and then number five, just nature, right? We need to respect nature. Uh, 
what we take with us, we need to take back out. Don't leave anything behind. You don't want to bring, like I said, your own firewood. You don't want to risk contamination. Also, don't think that you're Bear Grylls and you know all about <laughs> what it, you know, eating certain things. You don't want to do that unless you really were in Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and know what you're talking about, because that wildflower probably is something that's going to make you itch and regret eating. Just respect the wildlife. Don't don't any don't do anything your parents wouldn't want you to do. And then one of the last two things is just being cleanly. You know, you're in a space where you don't have access to facilities. You know, uh, dig deep holes when you use the bathroom. I learned that real quick. You also want to cover up. And then, like I said, the last step is just leave no trace behind. You really want to take anything with you back out again. You don't want to leave any evidence that you were there. So in sum, just to wrap it up, the things you want to do is respect boundaries, completely extinguish fires, keep it clean, keep it quiet, leave only your footprints, respect nature, and properly dispose of human and dog waste. And also just follow the rules. And lastly, you don't want to fringe on your neighbor's space. You don't want to ignore the rules. Don't violate speed limits or ignore quiet hours. And lastly, just enjoy yourself. If you follow these rules, if you follow these tenable rules, you will no doubt have a fun camping trip. Thank you. Great job, Heather. Thank you. And this was your second camping trip? Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. That's, <laughs> that's pretty serious camping right there. I've been camping tons of times, but that sounds pretty rugged to me. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Great. Um, we, since we just had Heather, uh, we will move on to table topics. And I realize right now that I'm the table topics master, aren't I? <laughs> so in light of it being Global Parents Day, Share your most memorable moment with your parents or you as a parent. For example, name a moment that was really spontaneous with your kids, but you nailed it. And it just turned out to be a really great day or, you know, just with another kid, if, um, you know, just share, share away, whatever you want. I'll start with you, Joey. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Well, with the Global Parents Day, I want to just say that I didn't know at the time the, the value of studying abroad, um, how that, what that was going to have on the impact of my wife and I. We, we were dating at the time, and then we ended up getting married, but we both went together and studied in, in Italy for about four and a half months from January to middle of May, I think, of 2004. And that was around the time, many of you have heard my story and we'll go into it. That's a speech for another day. The story about the Spain Madrid bombings, and that was in 2004. And we were on our way there when we got rerouted over to Barcelona because of that. <clears throat> so there were many lessons that we learned on that trip. And one of the biggest ones was when we are in the United States and we hear the news, regardless of where we're getting the news, we're getting a very filtered version of maybe what's really going on. We're getting maybe half truths and things like that. And that, that comes from both sides. And the one thing that we learned out there, we thought we were loved, beloved by all the countries around the world. Uh, when we got over there, boy, it was a big eye opener to know that people in France and people in Germany and people even in Italy, weren't too fond of Americans and we had to be careful, tread lightly basically over there and really be more of a listener and to listen to what, what they thought of us here. So now coming back to the parenting side of things, it really it was an eye opener then as it is now when we try and tell our kids, hey, there's always two sides of a story. You might have a fact that you're, we're talking about, like my son likes to throw these facts out and he said the Margin O line is such and such amount of miles, blah, blah, blah. Or Elon Musk is worth $177 trillion on Google said that. And he makes blah, blah, blah. And I said, you got to fact check. Make sure you're looking at different aspects. So it really got us to get out of our 
our sphere of, of being in this little knowledge silo and taking what that information is and knowledge and going outside of it and looking at it from just a different perspective. So that's how it's helped us on the global parenting scale. Thank you. I, I think, Joey, you're right. There's so much to be learned by other people, uh, countries. It, it's really a shame that there isn't a focus put on that portion of our children's education because not everybody can afford to travel, mm -hmm. but you get so much when you learn about other people's cultures and just, you know, sometimes, like you said, with the American travelers that when you have that mirror put in front of you and, mm. but it sounds like Heather's golden rules for camping could also relate a few of those to world travel. So that's kind yeah. of cool. Exactly. Like it would be tenable as well for traveling. <laughs> Danny, how about you? Do you have a story? So many stories. Let's see. <laughs> well, if we're going to get the international thing in there, um, I actually had a, a really fun experience. You know, when I was really young, I went to Mexico for quite a long time. I learned how to speak Spanish and um, I fell in love, of course, got married, and I lived with my parents-in-law. And in Mexico, there's more of a more of a societal level system. So there's more more of a upper class, lower class kind of a thing, or at least there was back then. So the the family that lived next door to us had dirt floors and lots of kids and one of the young kids, one of the young girls would come over and clean the house for my mother-in-law. And I wasn't quite on board with the way she was being treated. My mother-in-law explained to me that you had to talk to them a certain way or else they started to feel more entitled or something like that. Coming from, coming from the United States, I, I saw a lot of unfairness in that. I didn't like it. And I ended up in a situation where I was standing up for this young lady who was only, she was young, she was under 12. And against my mother-in-law, which was a little bit dicey to do anyway, but I couldn't help it. I just felt like there was an injustice going on there and I had to get all you know, involved. Well, Many years later, on Facebook, that young lady, who of course is Mexican, found me on Facebook, and she always remembered that incident. Isn't that funny? Love that. She, she's now a grandma, has you know kids and grandkids, but she wrote me the sweetest note mm -hmm. of how I stood up for her when she was a little girl, and it was just the sweetest thing ever. So. It made me feel so good. Love it. Danny, that is that was the perfect example of mm -hmm. an impact that you can have on a child. And look at that. Uh, it makes me tear up. Just your bravery for one mm -hmm. thing. A Mexican mother-in-law is not just any mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Same with the Italians too. Just it? saying. Yeah. Same with the Italian mothers. Good point. Very yeah. true. True, Danny. All right. <laughs> Joey, yeah. Who would like to go next before I volunteer you? Oh, Johnny's got a stand up. All I'll right, go. Johnny. Thank you. Can you hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Mine was when you said that right away, I thought of Mother's Day. At our Mother's Day, we all got together as brothers and sisters, and it was cool that uh, one of my bro one of my brothers gave us a mic and he had a speaker and a mic. So we went around the room or around the patio and shared, of course, uh, the loving points of our mother or, or what she did for us. And it was great to, it was good to be able to share with all of us, brothers and sisters, about our, our, our individual love and affection for our mother. And it was nice to be able to look at my mom in her eyes in Spanish, tell her, I love you because when I was three years old, you brought us from Mexico, Mexicali, and you suffered and uh, strived for us to be, to have success or to be better in the United States. And mom, you did it. So I was able to tell her in front of all of us and we we're all crying and 
Uh, it was a tear jerking time, but it was great to share with our mom because she's older. So we don't know when she's going to be gone, but this is the time to say thank you. And I love you to her. And that was a great moment. That was Mother's Day. And it's, I'm getting emotional now, but it was just, it was great to do that, to honor our mom and respect her and honor her for who she is. That's it. Thank you, Johnny. That's beautiful. Yes. Um, Sarah? I was, I was trying to think. I'm, there's so many ways that your parents impact you, but I'll tell about the time when I was sort of a mom. I, I, I've never actually given birth to children, but I had a, a, an exchange student for two years. She was from China. And we were just looking, so I had, we had a four bedroom house at the time and my roommate and I were looking for another roommate and we had this, somebody said, oh, why don't you do an exchange student? I thought they were an exchange student at a college. And when they said San Joaquin, I'm like, I, the law college has exchange students. That's interesting. I, I didn't, I didn't think of that, but actually she was going to San Joaquin Memorial. So and we looked at my friend and I looked at each other and we're like, do we want to be compared to a high schooler? Because <laughs> we know I've not been a parent you've never been a parent let's figure this out and so we decided to to take the take the plunge and become parents and it it was kind of fun and it was just interesting because you still even as you're co-parenting even just with a friend and everything you still get all those different dynamics that come into play with with normal parents I don't know if you would call them normal parents, <laughs> parents who are normal is you know she was the one that would give her more regulations and more guidelines and I was more I kind of laissez faire, I think, is in my parenting style, where it's just like, as long as you're not doing anything wrong, you know, we <laughs> expect you to rise up and do what's right. If you're doing what, not doing what's right, then I'll step in and say something. So she had a tendency to sleep a lot. And during this time when when she was sleeping a lot and she would wake up late. And so she was running late for school that day. And so her reasoning, um, she thought it was tenable to be able to um, say, well, since I'm already late for school, we should stop at, what's that place? Not Starbucks, but the yeah, Dutch Brothers. We should stop at Dutch Brothers and get a drink because, you know, we might as well because we're already running late. Well, most of my friends who knew this, when I started telling this story, they're like, you didn't, Sarah. They're, they're getting on me. You didn't really go and buy for this drink before school, did you? I said, <laughs> you did not. <laughs> so all my friends thought I would, but I actually put my foot down and I said, if you can get to school on time, I would be happy to take you, but I'm not taking you and I'm not rewarding you for sleeping and late and being, being late to school. So <laughs> you got a bona fide teenager right there, Sarah. It's right. like, just add water. <laughs> yeah. See Sarah, that was a natural parental decision right there. Cause you know, <laughs> she would have looked good to the students. Because she has her Dutch Bros, but the teachers would be like, "Oh, okay, you have time to get Dutch Bros, and then not get the class, right?" right? That's awesome. Yeah. So, Farron, how about you? All right, let me time myself. Hold on. I don't know if I really have a point to this story. It's just something that popped into my head. I think I learned my hustle mentality from my parents because I have these memories of going to work with them back when I was really young and I was an only child my sister is eight years younger than me it was just my parents and they were super low income they actually met at McDonald's they were both working at McDonald's and then my mom got a job at a movie store it wasn't Blockbuster it was called Video Park I don't know if you guys remember that <laughs> And my dad ended up working at Bike World in Clovis. He was a bike mechanic. And again, we were super low income. Sometimes they had to take me to work with them because they couldn't afford childcare. And I remember we only had one car. So my mom would take that to work usually. And my dad put me in a trailer in the back of his bike and would go all the way from, where did we live? Ashland and West, all the way to Shaw and Clovis with me in the trailer. <laughs> and then I would spend all day at work with him, obviously during the summers when I was not in school. And then we'd go all the way back at 6 p.m. He would cart me all the way back home. And I just remember really cool things, being able to hang out in the bike shop, being able to walk around the, the movie theater, not movie theater, but the just go seeing all the movies. 
and I had like my own little area in the break room at both places and everyone was super welcoming and they're like, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And now I think it's funny because with my own kids, they have been to pretty much every workplace that I've ever had since having kids. I used to take them on assignments sometimes um, at uh, the Madera Tribune when I worked there, sometimes at the Present View when I worked there. And obviously now that I'm a dog sitter, they're constantly going on dog walks with me and drop-ins and things like that. And just learned from my parents that sometimes you just gotta make it work. That's great, Baron. I, I mean, that, that's the stuff that's just priceless to me. You know, you learn so much from your parents' examples and you know, definitely hard work. My mom was, uh, she sold home interior and, uh, it's not uh, Avon, but another makeup I can't remember, but she was always doing that when I was younger. And so, yeah, I got to, I got to watch her hustle back in the day. Did we get everyone? Did everyone had a chance to share? No, I'll go though. I didn't oh, get the Heather, Heather, I'm sorry. It's because you That's gave okay. <laughs> I'm not a parent technically either. It took me a minute to think of a good story, but it was 2017. Wow. Almost. Yeah, three years ago already. Um, my sister and her family came down from Oklahoma to visit my grandparents and they didn't tell us until the very last day when they were about to go back. Mind you, we didn't have the best relationship. So when I went to go see them and visit them, uh, especially my niece, because I had a very close relationship with her growing up, um, I just suddenly had gotten this idea of, let me take her for the summer. And without really even thinking or planning it out, my sister surprisingly said yes. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I had my niece, Izzy. Uh, she was nine at the time. We had her for about three months. She turned 10 with us. Uh, so I got to throw a big old 10th birthday party for her. And it was just a really nice time to be able to spend with her, but also stressful because I was planning a wedding and I had a new job, like, and I didn't technically ask my fiance at the time if she could stay with us. So that kind of caused a bit of an issue. Thankfully, he loves my niece dearly like his own and they are both crazy. They get along so well uh, that it worked out. But yeah, I, I was a parent for a summer and yeah, it's, it's made me realize I'm okay with being anti for a while <laughs> and being a parent a little bit later. So that is, that is my story or my son of being a parent. Oh, thank you. That, that's pretty brave, but that's a great age nine. And there's nothing like I, there's nothing like a aunt uncle relationship to me. Um, but thank you everybody. I think that went really well and I will pass it on to our general evaluator so she can introduce her team, Jenny Mason. Good job, everybody. Joey, you're evaluating today, are you not? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Joey's gonna evaluate Heather's speech for us. Thanks, Miss Denny and Denise, way to go on, as, as many of you know, doing Toastmasters, we wear many hats. And sometimes we don't know we're in a role and we are in it. And that's all part of life. So way to go, Denise. So for Heather's speech, Heather, what number speech was this? Four. Okay. So four speech. So this is your first one in the second level. Yeah. You're muted, Heather. Uh, I still says I'm on level one. Okay. So maybe I've missed understood that but I know it's my fourth speech okay okay yeah cool all right yeah a lot of really good information we always when you look at a speech we always trying to look at basically the audience so if you have a specific audience then you're going to give a specific speech when we give our speeches here at Toastmasters we have a rainbow audience in terms of different perspectives and where we're at and what we're interested in things like that so you don't know what kind of speech to give we're just giving you our, our thoughts on, on the speech topic and things. And I thought this was a very broad topic that a lot of us have either done camping or what I've heard before is called glamping, glamour camping. So I've done some of that as well. So a lot of us have been touched by camping in some way. So I thought it was a good topic for like a general audience. You can, most people can figure they've had some sort of camping experience. I'd love to see us standing up. That was great. And 
<clears throat> hopefully we're getting back to in-person soon and we'll get to do more of that. And some of the things that we get to get away with on Zoom, we won't be able to get to get away with when we're meeting in person, which will be fun. It's almost like some of us will get to relearn after we've been doing it live for so long and having to go Zoom. So standing up looked great and great setting up the speech, the organization of it. And those speeches usually that say the seven golden rules of camping or the 11 ways to do X, Y, Z. Those are great speeches because you can, you basically set that up from the start. I'm going to be talking about seven things, 11 things, four things. So we have an idea of how many points you're going to cover. And then you start to go into those points. So that was great setting that up from the beginning. You had a big smile. You used humor, which was really cool. What pathway are you in? Are you in a humor pathway? I'm in the presentation mastery pathway. Presentation ma mastery. Very cool. Yeah. So I liked how you're using humor, camping stories. There's a lot of humorous camping stories, a lot of goofy things. I know Denny, when we started this call, was talking to us about some speeches she's going to give on Motel 6 speeches, which are great. And I could probably do a couple of speeches on some hotels, motels that we've stayed at and the experiences. So it's a, it's great that to see you using humor and allows your, this big smile and it warms the audience up to what you have to say. You use the word of the day there at the end. Great job because you don't know that going into your speech. And that's almost something that's thrown on you and to be able to use that great work there. So what I would work on Things like, and I love when Denny talks about this, is when you're apologizing for something in the speech, when you say, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I lost track. Anytime you have to say, I'm sorry, almost as you just have to stop and then just find your, find your spot and don't tell us that you're, because we can see what's going on, we're, we're observing. But I like how Denny always reminds us of that. Don't, don't apologize for something that's bad that's happening or whatnot. Just deep breath, find your spot, and then you, you keep going. And then the last thing, I would say with notes. So you can use notes elegantly. Mm -hmm. And I know you said this is probably more of a last minute speech for you. You didn't have a lot of time to, to work on it, obviously, or else you would use less notes, right? So if you're going to use notes, what I recommend is instead of the stapled notes, because you're constantly having to flip pages and flip it around and flip pages and flip around, it can take away from your speech. So what I recommend, and this is where it's going to come in handy from when we're in person, is just have them all papered, no, no, no stapling. And then just you slide the paper to the side, you slide the paper to the side, and that it also helps you to keep track of where you're at in your in your speech itself. So that will come in big handy when we're live. And then the other thing with notes is it's easy on Zoom. We can get away with using it more because we can create a Word doc, big letters. So if we have a hard time seeing it from afar because you're standing up and you're standing back, is have it in big letters up on your screen where we can't see it, but you can see it. And it looks like you're looking at the, the camera while you're doing it. So that's a, a tricky way on Zoom that you can get away from with using your notes and it doesn't really look that obstructive. But other than that, I thought it was a great, great speech. Great speech overall. Thank you. Got it. Thanks, Joey. Always appreciate your evaluation. You bring a lot of experience to that. You bring out the good points for us to get better. We're going to have our timer report now from Karen. Thanks, Jenny. All right, let's get right to it. Heather, your speech went slightly over at 8 minutes, 13 seconds. For table topics, most of us went slightly over. Joey, 2.10. Denny, 2.13. Johnny, you stayed in there at 1.14. Sarah, 2.13. Myself, 2.03. And Heather, 1.32. Really good job on that one. Evaluation, Joe, you went slightly over at 423. Good job, babe. Slightly an understatement. Good job, Jerry. And I don't know how you keep track of all those things, but there you do it. Okay, and our awe counter is Joey. Thank you, Denny. Okay. And being a day where we were having to do different roles and roles we didn't know we were going to have to do, overall, not bad. Farron actually caught a few couple ands, ands that weren't transition. They were just more of and and then starting a sentence. So about three of those and just one and one, one uh and one um. Uh was the word of the day for everybody, I think. And I didn't keep my, track of mine, but I'm sure I probably used one or two. Denny, couple ums, couple you knows, couple false starts, and one tisk, one tisk. Denise, three ums, one and so, 
one or two us and one you know you know was another one that was used heather again i know you weren't you hadn't done your speech a hundred times before getting into this one so it's it's tough so a couple us and ums are the the big ones us and ums sarah actually did pretty well it's probably the better one in, the, in our group today one and two us and one you know it's only four total sarah dawson still waiting for those cookies awesome dawson cookies and then Johnny, not bad for second time in our group. So two us, one er, and then a few tisks. And I know the tisks are more from the braces. I've had braces and it's when you're getting used to them, it's it's tough because you're, you're dealing with a little bit more. You get the metal in there and things. So it's, it's a little tougher, but uh, not bad for second time around and actually getting in on our table topic. So way to go. <laughs> Good job, Joey. See, I tisk and I don't have braces anymore. What happened there? You and Dave. <laughs> Very good. So overall, I think we had a great meeting today. Our group does a great job of jumping in and taking, taking up roles when we need to. So we started a little bit late, uh, five minutes late, but we filled up the time with no problem. And everything went really well. It's good to see everybody again. And I'll turn, the, I'll turn this back over to Farron. I'm going to step in. I didn't get to give my report about the, the report of the day. And there were Sarah is going to give her report right yeah. now. But Joey, Heather, myself, and Denise, I heard use it today. Great job, everybody. Oh, now you can turn it over to whoever came. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Farron. I said the word too. Yeah, I thought I heard Farron. <laughs> um, hey, writing it down. Thanks. <laughs> this is great for you, Johnny, to see that even these well-polished, established Toastmasters have days where we flub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're all humans. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. You're right. Great job today, team, with covering for everyone who <laughs> bailed at the last minute. Uh, virtual stickers to Sarah for taking over Grammarian last minute, and to Joey for taking over as Uh myself for taking over as Zoom Master and Running Timer, and then of course the virtual sticker to Heather for her speech, and as well as Denise for um, not realizing that you were doing table topics, but just <laughs> busting it out at the end with a really awesome question for us to answer. Good job, everybody. We can fill out next week's agenda. June 8th is National Best Friends Day. Who would like to be Toastmaster? I think I'm speaking, so I think I'm gonna refrain from a roll. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have Forrest and Sarah down as speakers. I can do Toastmaster. Awesome, thanks, Danny. Evaluators for Forrest or and or Sarah. Can I finally be an evaluator now? Yep. Okay. Uh, can I give it a shot? Yep. Thanks. And for whoever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, I'll put you down to evaluate Sarah's speech. And then Forrest, that will be his icebreaker. Would anyone like to evaluate his icebreaker? You can put me down, Aaron. Awesome. Table topics master. I'll put myself down for that. And you can put General me down for GE. You can put me down for GE. Okay. Joey. And then Grammarian, I'll counter timer. Um, if no one else, I can take timer too. Okay. All right. I'll probably Baron. assign roles. Baron, can yeah. I do all counter? Am I able to do that yet? You guys? Are you, are you joining officially? Can I, how do I join officially then? Can I join officially? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Johnny. I'll send you the application. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Get money involved. That's okay. I, I yeah. thought I saw something, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a little bit of money now. <laughs> okay. That's yeah, all so I once you join, Johnny, we can get you into some of those roles. Once you oh, okay. All right, then I'll join and then maybe next time. But yeah, I'd like to get more involved, so. 
good. Absolutely. Yeah. I will tentatively put you down as grammarian. So if you um, become a paid member before next Tuesday, then you can absolutely fill that role. Uh, you mean all counter? Uh, I put you down as grammarian. Do you want all counter instead? Yes. <laughs> Let me start with that first. <laughs> you have to get us back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Especially you, Danny. Okay. <laughs> no, I'll just play. I'll play with you guys. Yeah. All right. And then I have June 15th. Myself and Joey are speaking. Joey, still good for that? Cool. Yep. And then June 22nd, I have Storm. Would anyone else like to schedule a speech? Johnny, maybe you want to jump in for your first one then? Yes. What date? The 22nd. Okay. I'm in. Okay, perfect. Cool. Sweet. Let's do it. Johnny, I'm sending you the application right now. Okay, and I'm sending you the money right now. <laughs> I'm gonna include I'm gonna include uh Joey in that email. He handles the money, but I'll get you the information in the application. Okay, thank and you. And I've got to step off, guys. I'll right. see you next week. All right, Denise. Good work. Thank Have you, Denise. Week. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that's exciting. I'm glad we're getting a new member. Club is yeah. continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any other questions, concerns from anyone? Yeah, that's it. That's pretty good. That was one of the better meetings where the wheels are starting to fall off and then we're able to put them back on, patch it up and get them on and don't going down the road. The road. Good. My only question. Oh, oh sorry. And just make, real quick, Farron, for the background, for the timers, do you download, download that somewhere? Is that something I can, oh. that's free? Yeah, I'll send them to you. Um, I think we got them from Winnie. Was it Winnie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll just email them to you. get them on them. the Toastmaster website too. Yeah. I think it's, what is it? You, you download them, well, you get them, and then you upload them into Zoom, right? So then you can go to your background and then you can okay. change the background. Yeah. Okay. Are you Thank familiar you. with how to do that, Heather? Huh? Are you familiar with how to change your background on Zoom? Uh, nope, but I'll make it work. So I'll so, play with it. I've got four meetings in between. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I've got lots of meetings to play with. <laughs> it's just those little three periods up at the top. If you hover yeah. over that, usually, or no, 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 it's over your the video icon down at the bottom. You click that and it says choose virtual background. It's pretty easy. But fool, fool around with it, experiment. Will do. Thank you. So, Joey? Yes, sir. Hey, I just noticed I'm going to go to Mexico for a missions trip that week and go help build a house. Okay. Um, can I go the week after or the week before? Ooh, uh, yeah, move me, Farron. Move me to where he was at and then just move him forward. So okay. it'll be on the 15th. 15th, yeah. okay. 15th. All right, thank you. Thanks, before you leave. And, my, and Farron, my question is just a personal question to you. When do you leave for your trip? I'm going June 16th through 23rd. June 16th, okay. Yay, all right. I just been thinking about it. I'm like, well, I wonder where she's going, so okay. <laughs> Drive safe and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another shameless plug. I started a podcast. Mm. I will send the link out in the next email, I guess, so you guys can listen to it. It's a mini podcast. I think I've maxed out at like eight minutes each one. So it's just something mm. to listen to with your morning routine and hopefully help me become okay. a better student. What's well. the theme? What's the theme? For it's, it's called Find Intention Today. It's just about setting an intention for your day, kind of a yoga mm. thing, mm -hmm. self help type thing. Cool. I like it. <laughs> and the link out. Good. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. I will see Bye. you guys. Everybody Bye. have a good week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.